What's going on guys, RMG Games, welcome back to another video, and if you saw Rayworks' latest, well not latest, I want to say his last Wednesday stream, which was on uh, September 11th, um, you'll, you'll have noticed me with the gigantic fire thing around me. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me play the clip from his stream real quick. Still don't know how you do that. Of course, random games. Got the craziest looking commands going on around him. Is that like a lot of entities? Oh wow, that's 160 entities. <laughs> How many different commands is that? Using a function with a bunch of commands. That looks pretty wicked. 74 commands. I'm gonna have to watch that video. Yeah, you need to make a video about this, random games. <laughs> Reminds you of uh, the... Eventually, cool. So yeah, it looked like that. Now, to create this, you're gonna need a couple things. Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. Uh, functions, access to the, you know, the game data packs. And some, some math knowledge. Sorry guys, you're gonna need to know a little bit of math for this. Um, but let's hop out of Minecraft, go to my desktop, and I'll show you guys how I did it. All right, so as you can see, here we are in Excel. And um, you see I have a table set up. Now, I'm not going to give this to you guys because if you know how to use Excel or Google Sheets, you can do it yourselves. It's not that hard. I'm going to walk you through it. So, first thing I have here is run. And this is the part of, this is the command that I'm running. This is particle smoke. And it's just at the location of the XYZ that I'm calculating over here. So we're just going to use tilde, tilde, tilde over here. Now, we have scoreboard, angle, X, Y, and Z, and then command. This is automatically generated through this stuff, but that's some of it's a little extra. You don't need all of that. Um, XYZ is automatically calculated based on the angle. And scoreboard is set manually or just one through how many lines you have until you get to 360 down here, as you can see. So this works off an angle in degrees. So zero degrees is zero in X, one in the Z. So if I look over here, so if I click F3, you can see the red, green, blue. Uh, let me, I want to prepare for this, hold on. Red, where's red? Red, green, blue. So this is red, this is green, and this is blue. Blue is Z, red is X, green is Y. So we're going to start over to the right, and it's going to, because normally degrees are calculated this way for positive, we're going negative degrees, so it turns this way. As you can see from the particle, it's turning clockwise. So we have to use negative degrees. Um, and this is using the cosine and sine functions, and y is just a fixed value equals 0.7. Um, so, as you can see, we have x. This is round to the four digits. Um, actually, so we have angle. So, 0, negative 5, negative 10, all the way to negative 360. Uh, we have the scoreboard, or what scoreboard value to set for each particle. Now, if I wanted to do multiple particles, you divide this from here to 72. In this case, because that is the number just before 360, uh, 72 would be, you know, 1, 3, 4, whatever you want. Divide that into groups. And then if you do every 4, 72 divided by 4, that is 18. So we go 18, 19, set that to 1. And then if we autofill all the way down like that, it will automatically set every other one. Every So there's four groups, basically, of school boards now. Now, in angle, we have that, I already explained, X, Y, and Z. Okay, so we're rounding a number, which is the sine value of this number turned into radians times 1. That 1 is just the radius. We can change that anytime we want, or you can change that to another function, whatever you want. But this is where you would write your X and Z and Y functions if you copy this into Y as well. Um, in, in this... So ignore that and ignore that, basically. All you need is sine radians d2 times 1. However, it gives you a ton of decimals, so I just have it round to the four decimals that I need. It's good enough. So we have that for x. y is just a set value. z is cosine instead of sine. Same exact thing, though. And now we have the command. So if it's not the last command, which is what this does, basically, so it checks the command underneath it. For instance, if we go all the way down, there's nothing below this, so it has a different command. Um, but if we have, if there's something below it, basically it does execute if score as particle matches, which is right here, and then C2, so that we'll look at the scoreboard over here on the far left. 
because I'm, I'm selecting this box, not this box, even though it's highlighted blue. Um, C2, so it checks the scoreboard, positioned, and then it gets the XYZ values, run, and then it runs the command right there. Now, if it's the very last one, come down here, execute if score, the previous one, so in this case it's 18, matches that, scoreboard players reset it, so it starts the clock again. So it uses a scoreboard as a clock named particle, um, and it uses a tag, because execute if score at S, so I'm using actually a couple functions. So basically, let's let's do something real quick. So I have a couple things in here. Let's get some an error one. Let's just copy paste that in here. Paste values. I did that by clicking Control Alt V. So now I have the summon command for the arrow in there. This will summon an arrow with one meter per second upwards velocity. Uh, it can be picked up, but that doesn't matter because it has a life of 1200, which is, means as soon as it touches the ground, it's going to despawn. Fire for 300 ticks, and color negative 1 is a bug in 1.14, where it has weird blue particles around it, so I just gave that to get rid of it. So now we have that, and it should autofill into all of these commands. Let me just expand that out so you can see. Execute, blah, 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 summon arrow, and then the rest of the command. Now, if we want to change X and Z, we can come into here. Uh, let's set the radius to 2. Let's set the radius here to 2 as well. And let's use, instead of using 1.7, let's use a function for y as well. Um, or we can just, mm, yeah, let's do a function. So if we round the sign of the radian value of the angle to 4 digits, but then we multiply that by 1 half. So that will do, oh, oh we could do this. So we could do... Radians times uh, four, so that would be four. It will go f up and down four times within 360 degrees, um, and then times one half is the actual height difference, because that's after the radi the sine value. Um, and then we'll do plus 0.25 to bring it so that the bottom of it is zero. So we'll do that, and then we'll take these boxes, autofill all the way down by holding that little box in the bottom right. You see all these numbers change. You can see the lowest number is zero. For y, where are the y values? Oh, it looks like I'm a little high, but that's okay. 0.25 is the highest. So we can actually get rid of that, it looks like. Let's fix that. So 0.25 here. Let's just set it to zero. Now if we fill... Oh no, it actually still is negative in some spots. Whatever. So I'll show you without without the... So it's just one half. Um, and then these... So let's do every negative one degree... So let's autofill all of that. So let's get these two boxes, because I want to get the scoreboard, the angle, X, Y, and Z. And then we're going to go all the way down. And this is going to replace all the scoreboards. And that's a lot of them, not enough yet, because we have to do 360 of them. A little bit longer. 360, so we can delete those. Now you have all our commands. Let's split it up into groups of four. So 360 divided by four, that's 90, of course. So if we go all the way to 90 now, right there, 91 is the next one. Set that to 1. Now we see 1 here. Auto fill that all the way down to 360, and it will fill it into groups of 90. Ignoring the bottom one, we don't care about that. All we care about is this, because it says score player set. If you're set to 90, 0. So if we go all the way back up, we can copy all of these commands into our function, right? So let's go over the function. So let's open up the data packs folder. So if you go into the world, go to data packs. I have a data pack here, data. Now Minecraft tags functions. It has a load command, but I'm not using it. And it has a tick command, which is running the rendered view games tick, which is this file right here. So execute as at e tag equals particle. This is how you target what entity you want the circle to be generated around. At s run function, run the particle, which is this. Now. Everything below that first line is what you get from Excel. So you have to type this manually. Score players add at s particle one because it's targeting the person or anything with tag particle. So it's going to add one to the score. Then it's going to do all this. And it's only if it's one of these values. So let's go all the way up. So only if it's one. So let's start at zero. If it's one, it's going to run this one. It's going to run this one. So it's going to do four at a time. It's going to go all the way down. And then it's not going to be 90 yet. So it restarts again. It sets it to 2, does the next one, does the next one, and it increments through the XYZ values. After it gets to 90, it resets to 0, and goes back to 1 again right at the top, so it makes a perfect loop. So we'll save that. And now, in the world, I already have it, but you do scoreboard, objectives, add, particle, dummy like that, but we already have it. 
and we tag at s add particle because I'm the entity I want to be making add around. Now all we do is reload the particle and you can see it's going very slowly around me and you can see the y value of where they're spawning changing just a little bit. You can't really tell. If we change the particle from the arrow to something else, for instance I have a totem of undying particle here that I already have set up. Go all the way back up, paste the contents, copy these, go into the very bottom, go back to the very top selecting everything, paste, save, reload. You can see now it's very low. You can see how the Y value is changing. So if we look at this one, I go against the floor, see it going down. It's going to come back up above the ground and down. And the angle that we set is negative one. So it's, dig it's one degree per function. So 360 or 90 has to go for one, one quarter of this entire circle around me. So if we did something like, something a lot faster, like negative five, negative 10, and then we'll just copy that and autofill it. There we go. I saw 360. There it is. Everything. Oop. Where are we? 360. Everything from here down, we do not need. 72, I think it was 18, if I remember correctly. So we go to 18, 19 equals the top one. Split it into groups of four, like so. Now we have a lot less commands. We copy all those. Select everything in here, paste it, replacing everything except for the top one, and reload. And you can see now it's going a lot faster. And you can see the Y value is pronounced a lot more as it goes up and down. Especially if I go underground, on the ground, I should say. It goes up in the these corners and it goes back down right here. So yeah, um, you can do any command you want. You could do something fun like, let's, let's make one right now. Let's do summon TNT at the location of the execute. Uh, fuse... 10 comma motion and let's give it so that's one meter per second upwards i set the fuse right so let's set it a little bit 17. i want to try again and stop Ooh, that looks pretty good let's try two uh, let's add a little bit more to the fuse there we go, that's good. So let's summon that on there. So let's replace this. And you're gonna just see craziness, right? So let's do it. Reload. <laughs> Everything is just exploding. So yeah guys, uh, tag at S remove particle. I blow everything up. So let's summon a chicken. Let's let's do that. Let's summon a chicken. Uh, actually, no, let's do a bat, because it's going to fly around. Let me find the bats. And the mite. Where's the bat? Nope. Nope. There it is. Summon a bat. Tag at E. Type equals bat. Add particle. <laughs> so yeah, guys. If oh, the bat died. So if you're not careful with this, you can destroy a lot of things. Um, but it is a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye, guys. Whee! What's going on, guys? Uh, hey, guys, welcome back. In the Ooh, hold on now. There we go. I'm not going to walk through every single little bit. So, my no why is my head skipping left and right? Goodness. Oh, my God, the shake. Ah!